Greetings everyone! In today's video, I want to create an active crossover for my subwoofer. In other words, a low-pass filter. Crossovers are essentially filters, so I'll use the terms interchangeably in this video. About 15 years ago, I built a subwoofer for my computer sound system, and I went with a passive crossover. This is the crossover I just removed from the subwoofer. The reason I went that way is so I could just use the one amplifier that I have. Active crossovers require an amplifier for each driver you're powering, but they're superior in many ways to passive crossovers. Well, for one thing, especially with the subwoofer crossover that has a pretty low frequency crossover point, I think it's around 100 hertz. It might even be a little higher. But the point is, at such a low frequency, you need pretty large inductors. That's a lot of turns of copper wire, and you're going to end up with a pretty high amount of series resistance. As a matter of fact, these coils have about one ohm of resistance, and that's going to rob a little bit of your power because that's going to be dissipated in the copper losses. That'll also increase the damping factor that the driver sees. Another benefit of an active crossover is it's easier to design higher order filters. The higher the order, the more parts you need. Inside most speakers, they use second order filters. This is a second order filter for the low frequency side. And if I wanted to use a third or even a fourth order filter, that's going to require a lot more parts. That can get expensive. Quite easy to do on the perf board here with an active setup. It's just additional resistors and capacitors, very inexpensive parts. Also in the design phase, it's advantageous to go active because if you do need to tweak something, changing a resistor value or a capacitor value is a lot easier than having to remove the coil and rewind it and you know change its value or change capacitors here. You know, these capacitors here, especially if you use the expensive, high-quality film ones, are something you're probably not going to have in stock. Well, these little film ones, you probably have a few in stock, and you can buy them for pennies. So, yeah, big design phase advantage. So here's a closer look at the filter I set up. Ignore this, it's not part of the circuit. So I'm using a rail splitter. It generates a virtual ground. I like to do that when I'm playing around on these socket boards. That, that way I don't have to run wires from a power supply. I can just use a 9 volt battery. I'm using an LM4562 op amp mainly because it will run on very low voltages. So I can play around and like I say just use a 9 volt battery. And the rail splitter generates the positive and negative rails for the op amp. And because the op amp has actually two amplifiers inside, I have one of the filters operating over here and another filter on this side. Let me show you the schematic. Well, here's the schematic sans the power supply. This first section here is what's known as a solid key active filter because you have the op amp involved. It's a second order type filter. It has a Butterworth alignment. What are all these terms I'm throwing out at you? If you want, I can do an introduction to filters, how you can build these things. They're actually not too difficult to build. If you go to Wikipedia and look up Butterworth filter and you start scrolling down, you see all this intense math, you go, oh my god. No, it's not that hard. You don't need to know all that stuff. This filter is a low pass and it's tuned at 75 hertz. I wanted 80 hertz, but you know the values I had in stock it ended up at 75, which is near enough. I should mention the design of this filter is meant to be used with my subwoofer. It may not work as well with a different subwoofer. This is designed for mine and I'll show that here in a minute. Now, it does seem strange, but the second order enters into a first order filter over here, which is tuned at only 40 hertz. 
and I played around with it, but the way this works, it actually gives me what I want. And I'll hook this thing up to the Quant Asylum audio analyzer and I'll show you the curves and I'll explain what I'm doing here and how it works. Okay, here are the results. That red line is at point A. So it's the, the output from that first part of the circuit. The blue line is at B at the output of the total filter there. So you're seeing that response here, 0 dB, that represents the in, what the input signal is, since that section doesn't have any gain. And it starts rolling off, and it's, um, I put markers on there. So it's about 73 dB down, dB down. 73 hertz at 3 dB down, right there's the 3 dB line. So it's pretty close. We wanted 75, but, you know, component tolerances and all that stuff. And it rolls off at 12 dB per octave as a second order Butterworth filter would. And here's the output from the entire filter itself. And you notice down here it has 6 dB again because if you recall, I added gain to that. Right there, those two resistors, those two 10K resistors add some gain. So with gain in that first order filter tuned at 40, we get this kind of curve. And this is what I want. That subwoofer I have is 3 dB down at 40 hertz. So this is 20, 30, 40. So this line is giving us a boost of not quite three, it's two and a half. And as the frequency gets slower, we get a little more boost. We get one, two, three, about four at 30 hertz and one and five at 20 hertz. So I'm adding a little bit of bass boost. There's something called a Linkwitz transform that when used with a sealed woofer, it adds gain, or I should say the same amount of gain that the woofer is losing. So at 40, if I'm losing three, it would add three. At 30, you know, it would roll off a lot steeper and it would be down just to pull out a number. Say it's down eight dB, well that would add eight well, this is 30 line here. And if it if at 20, if it's down 15, it would add 15. Well, that filter's kind of not practical because if you're putting 15 watts into the subwoofer at a 0 dB gain, at 15 dB gain, you would require nearly 500 watts. And you would have to have a woofer driver that can handle the X max at 20 hertz so you don't get a bunch of distortion so yeah it's not to me it's not practical because I would have to have a huge amplifier on there now going with this gentle filter it works with room gain to give me a little bit of bass boost I'm not looking for a lot this way I don't have to use a powerful amplifier and I don't listen with my computer speakers at a very high level and so I really don't need a lot of extra power to have that bass boost. Another issue you might be wondering about, this keeps rising. You know, this filter, there's no capacitor in line with the signal to block DC. They're all shunting signal at higher frequencies. So DC just goes right through. The input of my amplifier I'm using, I use a little smaller cap than necessary and it starts rolling off so that's 3 dB down at I think it's around 7 Hertz so this line would actually start rolling back off again I remember when I first got the Quant Asylum 403 reading something about able to plot phase graphs on this thing so I'm kinda looking around the software the automated tests and I don't really see anything 
leave it to AI, and just type it into Google, and it comes up with this response here. You know, I'm so happy that my electric bill is going to skyrocket because of all these data centers they're going to have to put up to handle all the AI. And it works. We got a phase plot here. Boy, this Quant Asylum, you learn something new every day. As that Project Farm guy would say, very impressive! <laughs> yeah, that red line is the phase plot. So this filter is low pass, so you get a negative, or I should say a lagging phase, the negative there. And it was 3 dB down around 70, as I recall. And we're around minus 140 something. So for every order of the filter, the phase is 45 degrees at cutoff. So we have three poles in this filter. Now they don't align up, so it might be why it's not exactly at 135. You see, it's more like 145 here. Let me put this marker. But yeah, I was just kind of curious of what's going on with the phase. So here's the subwoofer. Normally stuffed under there out of the way. You can see where it left an imprint on the carpeting. So it's a 15 inch woofer in a 3 cubic foot box. Whatever that is in liters. 80 something, 85. It's braced and everything. It's uh, system Q is 0.7. Resonant point is, I believe it's around 40. And uh, if the Q is 0.7, that means the F3 point will be the same, around 40. Now, I'll have to play some YouTube safe music here. And I... I have some bass here. The problem with a lot of the bass, it's not pure. It sounds kind of harmonically laden, like there's distortion or something, but that's just the way it is. And my camcorder microphone will not record bass, so I'm going to have to use my sound recorder in this. I replaced the uh, Electret mic capsules in this thing with high-quality ones that do a much better job recording and I'll use that to make the recording so what I'll first I'll play without the filter so it'll let you know more of the signal through kind of give you a baseline then I'll record it using the first section of the filter the um, the second order at 73 Hertz whatever it came out to be and then I record with the full filter which provides the bass boost. Okay, so you probably can hear how the mid-range gets through if you don't have a filter in. That's the whole reason for having a filter, of course. Then with the first section of this filter, you can, how it, you can hear how it really takes out all that mid-range. Then the second filter eliminates even more of it, and it has a boost to the bass. I don't know if the recorder picked that up or not, but I can definitely hear more bass. I don't know if the camera can pick that up because it's still going. But yeah, pretty neat. Very happy so far. So uh, 
yeah, I'll have to actually build this out. I have to look at a high pass for the mains and even a little amplifier to drive this subwoofer. It is dual voice coil. I'll just combine the coils together. They're 8 ohms per side, so combined together they'll be 4 ohms. I'll probably just use this amp in the meantime, but so I'll wrap it up here. That's the crossover for the subwoofer with bass boost. Thanks for watching.